hello so today in this video I'm going to review another uh, job description it's uh, a job um, with Mercer uh, I don't know if you know about Mercer but uh, Mercer has been there in India a long time and, and they're an international brand and they're uh, into several things actually they're into consulting asset management and so on and so forth um, I remember in my time Mercer used to be one of the biggest uh, 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 company when it comes to hiring actuarial consult consultants uh, in the quantitative space uh, in India and uh, I think they've since been uh, they have been expanding to different other businesses and they do have a wing called Mars McLaren it's uh, part of Mercer and they're uh, into quantitative investment uh, they're hiring a senior manager uh, as a quantitative developer in Mumbai and this is the job description by the way they have several uh, jobs uh, in 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 the depart in, in in the company in mumbai you can check them out uh, on linkedin uh, but this particular job is uh, uh, yeah for people who are developers but they have uh, some knowledge or, or some skills in in quantitative modeling so i'm going to uh, yeah discuss about this particular job description um well as the name suggests right it's a quantitative developer position that means it's not a uh, a role where you will be building models or developing models this is rather a software engineering uh, role um which requires some knowledge of finance and quantitative finance but uh, this is primarily a software engineering role in a quant form right um it's quite lucrative by the way right so don't uh, think that just because it is you know software engineering and not a control uh, this probably is less uh, lucrative but that's actually not the case you'll be surprised in some you know forms quant forms actually the software engineers actually make right as much money or even more in some cases than the the quants or the analysts right so this is uh, a role based out of mumbai um is in the investment department and you will be working as a quant developer um so a bit about yeah the company and it's part of mercer actually mercer is quite a big brand international brand uh they're present in various uh various uh places in the world and they're, they're into many things actually you know they are into risk management consulting they're into wealth management and so on actual consulting so they're into a, a number of things in the finance space Okay, I'm, I'm quite glad actually they do have, uh, you know, jobs even in wealth management, asset management area and they're hiring people in India because I think uh, in during my time in India, I think when I was, uh, I graduated from university, I don't think they were hiring for their wealth management uh, department in India. But, uh, you know, it seems that the, you know, the quant space is actually growing in India. I think more and more companies are now coming and I think uh, that that's a good thing. All right. So, um, so what do you do uh, in this role, right? You work closely with the portfolio managers to translate ideas into mathematical and statistical models through efficient and optimized code. So, as I have said, you know, the, the portfolio managers will obviously come up with you know their own strategy. The models will be built by people working as quants, and then you, as a quant developer, will be uh, translating the models to you know efficient uh, code. Right, you will be writing the code for it. You will be implementing the models, right? So, what do you mean implementation? Well, implementation is about taking the model. Model is nothing but a mathematical formula, right? It's just a mathematical formula. You take that, you uh, you know, write a piece of script that actually implements the uh, you know the, the model uh, on some platform, uh, right? It may be end-to-end -end work or it may be simply uh you know embedding the mathematical formula in some already uh yeah either external platform or internal platform right in many banks they do have their own internal uh platform sometimes they also um uh they they uh, go for external platforms like murex and on so on um that so you will be implementing algorithms um so that's uh, more about writing software codes rather than uh, rather than you know uh, doing uh, quantitative modeling uh, having said that uh, in my experience uh, what i know is that you uh, will only be a good quant developer uh, if you understand uh, enough quantitative finance uh, you have reasonable good understanding of uh, 
mathematical modeling you may not be an expert in that but you shouldn't be making like silly mistakes i remember uh, some software engineers making very silly mistakes you know one experience i have is that you know there was software engineer that was working with us and he was uh, he translated the you know it's a very simple thing right square root of a plus b within bracket what he has done is that he has made it as square root of a plus square root of b right which is 100 percent wrong um right so that kind of silly mistakes um right you you could uh, avoid you know i i've also come across people who uh, who have done like extremely silly mistakes like you know in denominator you have zero and then what they do is that they just put it as a more of a constant or a value of zero which is actually not the case right so that kind of very silly mistake sometimes uh, people make in the software engineering field um, and there are also more mistakes by the way so these are not the only mistakes you could make so having a solid uh, mathematical modeling background also helps you may not be an expert but uh, understanding of the basic helps a lot uh, but let me tell you on that uh, quantitative development is about 80% software engineering and 20% uh, quant finance, right? So um, this is not a prerequisite that you are an expert in quant finance. Uh, what is more expected from you is that you are uh, a good software engineer. You have uh, good skills in developing softwares, writing code, uh, efficient codes, uh, and uh, you should have uh, you know some mathematical skills in order to understand models right if i've done some preparation that really helps right um understanding of infrastructure you know scaling or uh, an uplifting of existing data infrastructure well that's that's more into you know data engineering part um and yeah develop enterprise-wide platforms to house investment models as i have said you know they're probably building internal uh, um, infrastructure where the models can be implemented um, it's probably not clear what kind of tech stack they're using maybe it's there somewhere below um, yeah but it's a tech role okay to be precise right so tech is the main thing right you need to be really good at the tech part of it right that's the bare minimum no matter how good quant you are you may be an amazing mathematician or a finance guy but if you do not understand tech or you are not good at tech uh, you do not have good experience with uh, writing software then you are not uh, fit for such a role right so this is more of a, a tech role and less of a quant role but it it has some um, you know it's a bit interdisciplinary so, so somebody who is just a software engineer won't fit in this kind of a role he has to learn some quantitative finance right so in terms of qualification they expect someone with a bachelor degree in computer science it uh, or you have if you have a master's degree in finance or quant finance financial engineering that's always a, a plus right so uh, they actually are open to people from computers and engineering background but also people from finance and quant finance background let me also tell you that there are people from finance background like co-finance background they also many of them are really good software engineers uh, in fact some of my colleagues who never had a, a software engineering computer science background in university they went on to become amazing in software engineer, engineers so um, that's actually quite possible right so uh, if so if you are somebody with a master's in finance you do not have a computer science background but you are a good software engineer you can still apply for these positions right but remember this is more for software development role rather than a modeling role right uh, it requires you to have uh, three to five years of experience with uh, python development um, and some experience with functional programming like haskell and all um, if i've done like matlab also you can just you know mention about that some experience with machine learning techniques uh, including neural networks regression model decision trees the nlp uh yeah i think more most software engineers nowadays know uh, some about uh, machine learning and ai i think that is uh, the trend right that's uh, uh yeah ai is is uh, quite popular nowadays in in almost all areas of software engineering uh, so i think most software engineers have some familiarity with that the problem is that people 
wanting to work into uh, get into quant uh, this sort of role they have many of them have no knowledge of, about the financial products the, the regulations around them the different theories for example here it is mentioned about portfolio theory right you probably ha haven't heard about that right or um, you know some modeling techniques related to finance whether it's whether it's uh, optimizations monte carlo simulations markov chain um, right that kind of uh, experience right stochastic calculus uh, most software engineering engineers perhaps um, haven't heard about these techniques ever they probably have used some simulation techniques in their engineering studies but uh, most of them forget it after they're done with engineering right so that the last point is where you need uh, some knowledge of quantitative finance right uh, you can prepare either doing a course or you can prepare either uh, reading about uh, about these topics uh, from books and blogs and videos right you can do self preparation or you can take uh, help of some experts uh, and and do a course with them uh, but this is again just 20% of the entire thing right uh, your software engineering skills are the most important skills for this particular role right uh, finance skills are secondary right um, they expect you to have uh, some experience with uh, you know the infrastructure used in investment in the investment industry such as fact set and um, yeah if you have experience that's good but you know these are proprietary softwares you know many people do not have experience with that so don't worry about it right you'll very unlikely find people with experience with these sort of software stack uh, and and they are in india right there is that's uh, even if you don't have this experience don't worry about it you're still fine you can always learn uh, in on the job and they will not be very hell-bent on having this experience on your cv right that's never the case right uh, progress with FRM, CRF, CFA or CA, IA uh, is a plus, not a prerequisite, but if you have uh, done some certification or you are in the process of doing it, it's also helpful, especially in convincing the guy that you are interested in finance because a lot of people actually are interested in finance, not because of anything, just because of money, right? And that's all not the you know uh, biggest motivation, although that is one of the many motivations. But it's certainly not the primary one. So not be the primary one. You should have interest in finance, right? That's the bare minimum, right? And how do you convince the interviewer that you have interest in finance? Uh, only if you have done some courses, only if you have done some certification, only if you have done some reading yourself, or you have done some side projects, right? Or a combination of all these three, right? Only then the guy will be impressed that, okay, you are a software engineer, but you still have interest in finance, and hence you, you fit the bill. Uh, goes without saying you must be having decent to good communication skills um, right in the finance industry this is an absolute must that uh, you should be able to write well speak well and uh, you should have decent uh, level of communication skills and by the way when it when it comes to communication skills people in an, in india they think that it's just about your uh, ability to write in english and speak in english uh, that's not the only thing, right? You should be able to write in a way that others understand. You should be able to speak in a way that others understand, right? Uh, so, and not just that, even uh, proper communication, like direct communication uh, and coming to the point uh, instead of just beating around the bush. So, uh, very important skills um, in any career in finance and certainly this uh, particular career. Right. If you have questions, please let me know in the comment section. If you really want to apply for this particular role, please go ahead. I think many of you have reached out to me uh, who have got uh, a background in, uh, in computer science, software engineering, but interested in the field of finance. This probably is a good uh, step, right? good uh, transition, a good opportunity to give you that transition. Right? A lot of people ask me whether it is too late for us to move to finance from software engineering. Well. This is one particular role, which is again into software engineering, but in the field of finance and asset management, right? So it, it's, it, it will act uh, like a bridge between finance and tech, right? So take this opportunity. It's a combination of both finance and tech and probably quite right for you. Okay. If you have any questions regarding this, let me know. And I'll see you in another video, guys.